morning, everybody. My name is Ardeep, uh, and uh, I've been working in the industry as a structural engineer for the last five years. Uh, I've graduated with Aditya here from IIT Bombay in 2016. Uh, so today and tomorrow, as he mentioned, that we will be having a look at eTabs, which is a software which is usually used for an analyzing and designing multi-storied uh, building uh, buildings. Okay, and so. Uh, no, notice that I have mentioned multi-storied buildings. So, so there is another software by the same company, which is CSI, uh, which deals with other types of structures and any myriad types of buildings, which is called SAP 2000. And uh, SAP 2000, you can make any types of structures. You can analyze them, design them. ETABS, on the other hand, is designed specifically for only multi-storied buildings. And it's very, uh, there are very modules in it, which is very easier for, for engineers who are designing such tall buildings to use ETABS. Uh, so ETABS gives you the ease of modeling such buildings quickly, since it is the most common type of structure, uh, though the engine core for both of them is the same. Okay. Uh, so the, the ETABS, what is what does it stand for? There should be some full form, right? So ETABS stand for, stands for Extended Three-Dimensional Analysis of Building Systems. Uh, so in this, this is a very widely used software uh, from CSI. There's, uh, so in ETABS, we can design buildings. There is another software called uh, SAFE, which is again by CSI, which is usually used for designing foundations and for designing slabs. Uh, as I mentioned, SAP 2000 is for designing, again, structures, but of very various kinds. Uh, there is Perform 3D from CSI as well, and CSI Column, CSI Bridge, for different types of analysis, as you can understand from the name itself. Uh, ETABS is, again, as I said, is for multi storied buildings, and is widely used like, across the industry. Uh, a lot of companies uh, have licenses for ETABS, and... Uh, you know, it's one of the most uh, most soft a lot of the uh, software because it's because of the ease of using, and also because it gives you very reliable results in that case. Uh, so this is the first page when you see when you open eTabs. I am using eTabs version 18. There is version 19 as well, and then so on as the years go by, there will be higher versions. Uh, so this is the first page of eTabs. Okay, uh, so of course, now we have to start with the new model. And as you can see, there are two such options. One is existing model and one is new model. Uh, for existing models, which exist already, which you've already worked on, you have to open via that. So what we're gonna do is of course, open a new model. Yeah, so as you can see, you have various options. Uh, there are uh, user default settings. The, the usual one which we go with is the user use built-in settings with. Okay, so you guys, you can see we can specify what units we're going to use. We mostly use metric SI in India. So we're going to go use with that. And then you can see what codes will be used for different designs, be it concrete design or big steel design. Okay. In India, since we're in India, to go with Indian. And the steel design code in India is IS 800. So as you can see, it has all sorts of codes for from different countries it has italian it has us it has uh, british standards it has new zealand standards and we have in indian standards, of course so i'm going to go with is 800 and next we can we come to the concrete design code which is again as you can see there are euro codes and whole plethora of uh, codes which are going to be in there so we are going to use again is 456 and next we click okay now, as you can see, we are given the option of what our workspace is going to look like, as in, as in what grids are going to come in. Here, you can see that there is an option for uniform grid spacing. Okay, so you can go ahead and uh, put the number of grid lines in the x direction and the y direction, and then the spacing. And you can even specify what the story height will be and number of stories which will be there in your building. Now, this is more of a uniform thing you know this is uh, a basic preliminary thing obviously your structure does not necessarily have to be a square system or there will not have all grids spaced equally of course it will be like your and most and always the grids go through the columns of the building right uh, so in case you have certain structures and certain, certain structures where your grid lines are not equally spaced what do you do then uh, you go ahead and 
uh, change it, you edit it, right? So for now, what you're going to do is that we're just going to keep whatever is here. And then I'm going to show how you edit that grid lines, those grid lines. Uh, so let's keep it. Number of stories is four, typical height is three. Everything is fine. And let's, I'm going to just go, go ahead with okay. Here you can see there are other such structural objects which you can use. Uh, blank is it won't introduce any grid lines, grid systems. Maybe you can import those grid, grid systems later on. Uh, then you have steel deck, staggered stress, uh, flat slab. So a lot of these modules are something which we usually don't use in ETABs. We use uh, safe for these like flat slab and uh, waffle slabs because they're more slab related structures and uh, safe is better hand in handling all those slab related structures. So mostly what we use is either blank or grid only. Okay, so I'm going to go with grid only right now. And as you will see that it will make, it will show you a 3D view and a plan view of your structure. Okay, so this is your grid line. You already have your grid lines in place. Now I want to go ahead and change these grid lines. Okay, so what I do is right click. Uh, as you can see, there is the option for add and modify grids. Okay, so I click on that. And then you have two options. One is the story data. Uh, so as we mentioned, we are going to use four stories. So there's base and then up to story four and grid systems. Uh, G1, it's the default name which it gives to the uh, gives the grid lines which you have mentioned. Uh, now what we're going to do is modify this. Okay, so if you go ahead and modify this, you can see there's an entire panel which opens up. And as we had specified what the spacing of the grids would be, you can see that the x coordinate, x coordinate and the y ordinates are mentioned over here. Okay, so we start from the beginning. So again, this is the name which you provide. It can it default is G1. You can go ahead and name anything. Uh, it provides what the system origin will be global X, global Y, zero, and rotation also will be zero. That's mostly what we use. Uh, say if your building is a little uh, twisted in any way. So there's a building, uh, it's not completely orthogonal. Okay, uh, so for the portion of the building which is queued, uh, there you might have a different system of grids altogether. So for that, you have my you might have rotation of something other than zero okay that's why this exists uh so there are now two options one is display grid system grid data as coordinates and other one is as spacing okay so in ordinates you can find you know what is the value so over here you can see there are grid lines in x direction is are named as a b c d and in y it's one two three four okay so this one is your zero zero coordinate okay and this one will be, of course, your 80 and so on. Sorry, this will be 24 zero. I'm sorry. Uh, so this is what your ordinates are showing up as. So if you can see, this is D, this is at 24, and one will be at Y ordinate zero. Now, if I go to spacing, spacing is going to give you what the spacing between each grid line is. Okay. So you can change it as per whatever is your uh, what your plan shows. Say in usually in any architectural plan or any structural plan of drawings, you can see that there will be uh, spacing between the grids mentioned. So you can change whatever is as per your drawing uh, in the tabs via any of these two uh, radio buttons. Okay. So if I say go with spacing, so I want to have a spacing of four meters between uh, between the two grid lines. Okay. And say I want to have three over here. So as you can see, this also it gives you a preview of what is going to come up and how it's going to look. Uh, it's not, I mean, obviously you have to go finally into the say into the uh, model space and then find out why, whether the changes have been already made or not. And then I go click OK. So one more thing, this one is something which you don't have to worry about. What this does is general grid. So in case when you are importing grid lines from, a, from an architectural drawing, from say AutoCAD, okay? Uh, ETAB doesn't usually understand those in terms of these. These are more like the inbuilt uh, modules of ETABs. You can just change them and uh, be done with it. If you have something a little weird grid lines or you want to import grid lines, it measures where the X1 coordinate is from the starting of the grid line to wherever the end is, which is X2, okay? And then it mentions and it just lists all those grid lines over here. This is for custom made grid lines, not exactly these kind of grid lines. Okay. So for now, what I'm going to do is click OK. And so I click OK over here again. See, it changed over here. Okay. So it you as you can see, this is like 
four meters now and this is three meters now. Now what I'm going to do is change the story data. As you can see over here, as I'd mentioned, the height between each floor will be three meters. And uh, based on that, so you one thing you should always remember that ETABs always, this is how they denote stories. Uh, they have base and story base will be one where you have your foundation level, mostly it depends on your structure, depends on your project. And uh, this is the highest story, okay? And you can even go ahead and change, say I'm gonna put it as level four, okay? Or maybe I'm gonna make it roof. So you can just double click on it and change whatever, uh, like change it according to whatever nomenclature you wanna go ahead with. Same thing for this, I'm gonna put it level three and level two and so on. Now what, and, and over that, what I can do is I can change the height of the structure as well, height of the level as well. So I'm gonna go with say five over here, five meters. It's unlikely, obviously, but uh, that's what I'm just gonna, I'm just doing it for, to show it to you. Uh, next is you can delete structures. So if you go to this, these, this panel, this row over here and right click on it, you can delete structure. Then you have two options. One is delete the existing structure and the story. So every story, if you look at E tabs, you know, you can go story wise uh, according to each plan of the uh, plan of the building. Okay. So there will be a structure in that story. Do you have an option of deleting the entire structure in that story, entire floor plan, entire slab, everything, whatever is there in the story, you can have the option of deleting it completely, or you can keep the structure at the story. But when you are navigating through each level, any tabs, you won't end up seeing that because you just deleted that entire story definition itself. Okay. But the structure will of course exist if you go for the second option. And uh, next is add story. Obviously you can add stories if you if you end up you know with any service level in between you did not know about and you can add stories over here uh, so you can keep story elevations so i'm going to keep story elevations and then i add have this option over here so i'm going to add say at six meters okay and it forms a story over here so this is about stories so i'm going to say go ahead okay and okay and keep an eye out for this one it's going to change. I guess it did change. Yeah, it did change over here. Uh, it is about grid lines. Uh, 